Hello friends, welcome to the 5 minute tour channel where we explore the beautiful world that we live in and provide tips and advices that can help you in your future travels. If this is your first time here, we would love for you to join us in our future endeavors by subscribing to our channel and please hit that like button as well. In this tour, we will be exploring another very popular city, London. So buckle up your seatbelts as we prepare for takeoff. <music> So before we depart, I would like to give you some background information of your destination to help you with your journey. London is another one of the world's global cities with influences from all over the world. It also has a rich history that goes back centuries. The city sits along the River Thames and the transportation is abundant. You can also take the popular tube or underground metro to get around town and a lot of the attractions are within walking distances of each other. The currency in use will be the pound and below are some of the popular used notes and coins. Next are the exchange rates for popular currencies. Credit cards are widely accepted in almost all businesses, however some cash is required for smaller businesses. Next we'll look at the weather averages throughout the year. Alright thank you very much for listening to that information, now let's get on with our tour. Our first stop will be the Shard London, which is a 72 story skyscraper designed by the Italian architect Renzo Piano in Southwark, London. It stands 309.6 meters or 1016 feet high. The Shard is the tallest building in the UK and the seventh tallest building in Europe. It is also the second tallest freestanding structure in the UK as well. Its beautiful design along with an open observation deck gets you beautiful panoramic views of London. It's also centrally located in the heart of London so many other attractions are very close by such as the Tower Bridge and the London Eye. There is a Shangri-La Hotel within and multiple restaurants with great views if you decide to dine here. Next stop is the London Eye or some would call it the Millennium Wheel which is an observation wheel in London. It is Europe's tallest cantilevered observation wheel and is the most popular paid tourist attraction in the UK with over 3 million visitors annually. It has made many appearances in popular culture such as movies and the London Eye is 135 meters or 443 feet tall and the wheel has a diameter of 120 meters or 394 feet. It was the world's tallest ferris wheel when it opened back in 2000, so expect a line or a queue as the Brits would call it when visiting during weekends or popular times. Standard tickets usually range from 27 to 34 pounds. Next stop is Buckingham Palace, which is also the home to the Queen. So Buckingham Palace is located in the city of Westminster. The palace has 775 rooms and the garden is the largest private garden in London. The palace is the focus of national and royal celebrations as well as the backdrop to the regular changing of the guard ceremony. The royal standard flag is flown only when the queen is present. If the new union flag flies above the residence then it signals that the queen is not in the residence. There are tours available to see some parts of the palace so you can book those online. While you're there, head over to the Green Park which is next to Buckingham Palace. It is one of the 8 royal parks of London. It was first enclosed in the 16th century and landscaped in 1820 and is notable among central London parks for having no lakes or buildings and only minimal flower planting. Next stop is Hyde Park which is another world renowned major park in central London and also part of one of the royal parks. The park is divided by the Serpentine and Longwater Lakes. The park was established by Henry VIII all the way back in 1536 when the, he took the land from Westminster Abbey and used it as a hunting ground. It opened to the public in 1637 and quickly became very popular. Next on the list is the Tower of London, which is a historic castle on the north bank of the River Thames in central London. It was founded towards the end of 1066 as part of the Norman Conquest. The castle was also used as a prison at one time although that was not its primary purpose as it also served as a royal residence. Many people claim that it is haunted but if you like museums and seeing artifacts then this would definitely be a place you must see. Next stop is the iconic Tower Bridge also commonly confused with the London Bridge. It is a combined bascule and suspension bridge in London 
which is built in the 1800s. The bridge crosses the River Thames and is close to the Tower of London as well. You can take a tour inside the bridge and learn about the history and it is also an active bridge so there will be traffic on the roads but there will also be plenty of visitors trying to take a picture with the beautiful bridge towers as a backdrop. Next up is the Big Ben which is the iconic clock tower at the north end of the Palace of Westminster. The nickname is actually for the Great Bell of the Striking Clock. The official name of the tower in which Big Ben is located was originally the Clock Tower but it was renamed to the Elizabeth Tower in 2012 to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth II. You can get great photos of the tower on Westminster Bridge and currently the clock is just about to finish conservation work in late 2022 so it has been temporarily closed since 2017. It is also used to count down the New Year celebration before the fireworks begin. Next, we head over to Trafalgar Square, where the name commemorates the Battle of Trafalgar, the British naval victory in the Napoleonic Wars over France and Spain. The square is very large in size and is also a place where many people gather and hang out. It includes many popular monuments such as the Nelson's Column, and the National Gallery Art Museum is also facing the square, so if you do have time, be sure to check that out as well. Next stop is St. Paul's Cathedral. This is a beautiful cathedral that sits on the highest point of the City of London. The architecture of the building is truly phenomenal and tours and admission tickets are available if you want to go inside to see the interior. The cathedral is one of the most recognized sites in London and remains among the highest in the world and definitely a site worth visiting. Last but not least is the O2 Arena where you can catch a concert or watch a soccer or football match and in 2008 was named the world's busiest music arena. The arena was built under the former Millennium Dome which is a large dome shaped building built to house an exhibition celebrating the turn of the third millennium. As the structure still stands over the arena you can book a trip to climb over the top of the arena and get amazing views of London. There's also outlets shopping and restaurants available if you wanted to change it up as well. London is definitely a great city and there's a lot more to see. If you have time, take a trip up to Stonehenge to see the iconic prehistoric monument or take a drive to the Lake District to get away from the hustle and bustle and enjoy amazing views of nature. So that concludes our tour for today. I hope you enjoyed your experience here and thank you for joining us. Should you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them down below. Let me know if you would like to see any other tours in the future and please hit that like and subscribe button. Goodbye for now 